It's the first day of school. Bug right in front of me is right here. He's got glasses on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good Here comes the bus. <laughs> But the doggies want to go. Something warm for your tummy? Biscuit and gravy. What do you want? Give him some salt and cheese. Oh, brown and here. the truck stop for Aunt Suyen. Truck stop. And that's what we call breakfast. We are sassified. Haven't been here in a while. We have to take Stella here to the pet hospital because we have a contract for veterinary service that we haven't really used. And it says we get free teeth cleaning, so that's what we're doing. So we're having a bit of a dispute with these people. They're saying that we haven't paid them and so they're not going to do anything for us until we call a phone number to sort it out and i'm beginning to think this is a bad deal this is one of these come on things pay us a lot of money to do all your veterinary care for your dog and then they figure out reasons why they don't want to see you or talk to you or give you the stuff they promised so i think we'll just let them Go pound sand. I don't know what it is about us, but we seem to bring a jinx with us. <laughs> when we go on our trips or vacations, like for instance, we went to go visit the Chocolate Hills in the Philippines on Bohol Island. And months after we visited, a huge earthquake came and destroyed the place. And then we also visited Cebu and my mother-in-law's island where she has her school. And a big typhoon came and wiped that place. Well, it didn't wipe it out, but did a lot of damage. And uh, we went to go visit Europe in 2015. And then um, we visited France and everything. It was 2015, 2016, yeah, 2016. And there was a, a bad terrorist shooting there. And, oh, so I don't know. Most recently, we went to visit Morgan City, Louisiana. We visited, we went on a swamp tour with Captain Caviar. And now there's a giant hurricane. It's gonna hit that exact place. So, we'll see what happens, but we feel like we're being followed by bad luck. And uh, we're, we're not bringing it necessarily to ourselves, we're bringing it to other people. So, maybe people will say, oh, you're those people that bring bad, don't come here. Anyway, I'm going to get something I haven't had in a long while. And it's Stabon. Hey, so she's closing down for the day. I'm going to go to 
Sister Anne, see if they're they're open. They make good coffee drinks. And but I, I got to talk to her for a little bit. Told her about our trip, and she already knew because she saw our pictures online. And so, so I haven't been here in a while. Let's give her a try. Coffee. Had an interesting conversation. Now, for reels, as promised, I'm taking this JVC camera that's been loaned to me as part of my job out to test it and mostly to get reacquainted with it. Um, I'm going to go to Santa Fe Junction interlocking to use it. But the conversation was with uh, somebody in there who's sort of a um, an anti-vaxxer. And uh, we were talking about this, its use of uh, large animal medicine as a cure or a prevention for COVID. And he was given the theory, the idea of validity, which, I don't know, I have to look into it. And then he said, well, you know, the Japanese government's been using it for their people. And he started going on, and then I, I, I just re remembered <laughs> all this stuff I've been learning and watching about Japan's history because I've been very curious recently. And I said, you do realize that the people of Japan do not trust their government. They don't like their government. They, they haven't since really before the big war, World War II began, or as they knew it, the Great Pacific War. Um, and one of the reasons why I found out by, you know, watching this documentary, this crazy documentary, one of the reasons why the Americans had a better time at an occupation in Japan than, than we thought we would was because the Japanese people, the peasantry, which was probably about 90% of the citizens there, embraced us because we came in to liberate them. And it's amazing to think, oh my gosh, you know, this country who we thought of as a monolith of fanatical people willing to do anything to die for their emperor considered the Americans to be liberators against their own government and that they considered their own government to be very oppressive. Now, the people there in general don't hate their, their emperor or their royal family. That's why that... that that institution still exists, but they did not like their government. Their government did not represent them. Their government um, <laughs> oppressed them, treated them like slaves. And when Americans came in, they knew about um, universal suffrage. They knew about, you know, our history of freeing the slaves. And, you know, you can argue one way or the other on that but they knew that we stood for something that they had never seen even though on paper they were a democracy there is a great valid reason which I had been kind of seeking the answers to as to why they became this big warlike imperial monster in the great pacific war 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 two and that was because it was their government military complex that was doing it. The people were sick of the war by the time the war ended. Actually, they were sick of the war by the time Pearl Harbor happened. Pearl Harbor was a great lie. Look, our victorious forces have defeated the enemy in a surprise attack in Pearl Harbor. And the people went, oh boy, hey, woo, maybe we're great after all. But I think really what they were hoping for was that the economy would get better because their empire was growing and they were extracting raw materials that they desperately needed from parts of the world. And, um, and that eventually their sons would come home and their brothers and, and the war would be over and peace would be shining on a prosperous Japan. Instead, after Pearl Harbor came Midway, which they never were told about. But they knew something was up when they started seeing 
bombers coming over and bombing the crap out of their cities and their economy and the people started starving and suffering terribly in addition to all the sacrifices and suffering they had been doing for the war they knew their government was a bunch of SOBs that had been lying to them. By the time the war ended they were sick of war. The average Japanese person was actually sick of war. So when the Emperor said we need to lay down our arms and accept the Americans as occupiers they're like whatever thank you whoever did this to us and if you ever wondered why Tojo was hanged in the end it's because he sort of became this scapegoat sure he was also a product a victim of the whole imperial war doctrine of the Japanese government and he was also a, a, um, a person who pushed it but In the end, he wasn't one that was responsible for all the disasters. He was just a cog in the machine that kept it going. And so they went another way, and, and they really embraced liberal democracy. And they, even though, you know, a lot of people, when you study the history, it's interesting. Essentially, there were 12 people who wrote the Constitution of Japan, which still stands today not changed at all and those 12 people among those 12 people zero were Japanese they all were Americans they all were appointed by D General Douglas MacArthur and they brought liberal democracy to Japan and it was embraced and it was embraced because they had no other they had gone the other way and they had seen what that had done and there were a lot of people who were fighting it to that to the end but they got shouted down and voted out <clears throat> And they knew it. So they, they just kind of went, okay, let's try it. And they did, and it worked. It allowed for the growth of industry and um, the free pursuit of, uh, well, basically what we here in America call the pursuit of happiness. So anyway, we went, we went through this whole conversation as a roundabout point to getting back to, well, you know, look at the Japanese. And I said, well, try to understand the Japanese. I've been trying to understand the Japanese. I still don't understand the Japanese. But don't say, look at the Japanese as a great example, because it just doesn't work. Maybe they are using this, uh, this horse medicine to treat people for COVID, and maybe there's large corporations in America that are trying to block it because they're trying to make so much money off of vaccines or whatever well you know what I got my vaccinations I wear my mask and I do what I'm supposed to do and I, I said you know there's here's the analogy you, you hear it's gonna rain tomorrow so what do you do with your nice shiny car you park it in the garage it's very little effort to do that and it's very little effort to get a shot in the arm and to wear a mask now, we wouldn't have to be wearing the mask if people would have been doing that all along. But instead, you got people saying, well, look at this, look at that, look at this. It's, it's crazy examples and why we shouldn't be listening to our government or trusting our government or our bureaucrats or anything. And uh, it's, it is like arguing with children really and it's not worth it it is not worth it there's no argument here um, vaccines have worked well since we've discovered them you know they've eradicated many deadly illnesses people acknowledge it people who have lived long enough to know this stuff acknowledge it and go well you know what there's a vaccine and it appears to be working let's do it or we can continue to let this uh, pandemic do what pandemics do and viruses and maybe the argument will be moot maybe it'll uh, it'll turn really really deadly really really fast and take out 
a lot of us. But, you know, my prayer is that if it's going to pick and choose who to take out, it'll pick and choose those of us who... I guess I don't even want to say that. Because, I, you know, I didn't even get to the part where I said, you know what? COVID is real. It took my brother-in-law. You're arguing with the victim here. I'm doing everything that I can to protect myself and my family and my friends and my community. And, uh, you know, stop using justifications, rationalizations, crazy conspiracy theories, and do what you're supposed to do. If you can get a shot, get it. If you need to wear a mask, wear it. If you need to stay away from people for a while, do it. Because we are still in mourning over a member of our family who got it and died horribly. Died a terrible death. I wouldn't want to wish... Just that idea alone would scare me enough to think, you know what, I'm going to get those shots. I'm going to take care of this. Well, anyway, I'm up to my location. I've been blabbing, blabbing so much that I got all my turned around and here's where I need to be. I'm going to uh, use the camera to learn how to use this camera again. It's the same camera pretty much that I used at my last job. And uh, with luck, I'll be able to use it at this one and, and be all right. Anyway, let's go shoot some train. Wow, that sun is bright. Okay, so I have worked myself to a point of frustration. The basics I have down, I can get started. <laughs> of course, I'm going beyond the basics. I'm trying to figure out how to import from JVC to the phone. I've never had luck with that. I don't know if it can be done. It'd be handy if, I, if it could. That's uh, what I want to try to do. But, um... Yeah, I can shoot with a thing and be creative and yada yada. I came out and shot one of my favorite things, trains. 
It's beautiful out here. Oh, look, Canadian Pacific. Hmm. But I'm so focused in on the, my techniques that I... Right now, I can care less about the beauty and the trains. Oh, my God. But, um, yeah, I worked with it. Let's see what I got. I'll have to take it home and put it on the pooter and play around with it. So, woohoo! Vietnam Cafe. And we have coffee. You want to try it? And spring rolls. And our vittles are in. We have curry chicken. And then there's some fried rice. And some, I don't know what that is. Soup. Chicken pho. Tell, them, tell me this, Zach, in a confident voice. Chicken pho. And then again, has got her soup. She's not feeling well these days. Beautiful neighborhood. As I do this wild swing over to where we just at. Mmm, Vietnam. We are sassified.